as has become custom Port Elizabeth's ever enthusiastic motorsport fans turned up in their thousands to support the engine national race day taking some extremely windy conditions in their stride. The event's main draw cards were rounds five and six of this year's Bridgestone South African Production Car Championship. This year's Class A title chase is a close affair, and we are some top contenders about their chances on the tight two and a half kilometer circuit. Sean Watson-Smith, final practice session. Everything looking okay on the Audis down here in PE? Well, I'm um, not as quick as I want to be, uh, neither is Michael, so we, we're struggling a little, to be dead honest. Uh, Johan's sort of setting the, the Audi pace today, uh, and uh, I don't really know why. We've tried quite a few different things, um, and hopefully we can pull something out the bag for qualifying, uh, but at the moment it's looking like we're battling a little bit for pace, to be honest. Uh, I haven't seen the times from the last session, but uh, Leroy's been quickest uh, today, and uh, with Johan sort of snapping at his heels. So, we lagging a little bit beyond that. Leroy Poulter, final practice just gone, and you're looking like fifth place on the grid at the moment, just before qualifying. How are you feeling? Well, uh, not good now after the last one, but uh, the, the two before we've been uh, first in both, and uh, well, I think the car is good. We didn't run new tyres now, like everyone else did in front of me, so I think it's looking good for qualifying. Still something in reserve, then. Johan Free looks like the man to beat down here, and the other Audi is off the pace. And then you look at Anthony Taylor, also looking strong. Yeah, look, I'm, I was surprised there. Anthony was very quick, but um, I know it's going to be close. You can see this year, every race has been very close, and that's the nature of this uh, sport. Anthony Taylor, Afrox BMW, just about to go out for qualifying. You just had your final practice. How's things looking for the BMs? Yeah, after the last session, now it seems to be very strong. We were second quickest now in the last session. Um, I think uh, qualifying is going to show a different, different hand again. Um, you know, you never really know what the guys are up to it, you know, during testing. So, you know, final straw gets pulled once. Uh, everyone's on new tyres at the same time, same session. And uh, that's only really when you get to see the true, who's going to have the pole position or not. You know, I think I feel very confident for, for tomorrow's race um, and for qualifying. So, yeah, I think for, for Team Afrox and that, it, I think it's going to be a, a good one. Also, you know, leading the championship going to, into this round, two points, I think it is. Um, you know, we're trying to get as many points as we can. So, pole, first and second, if possible, would, is, is really what we're looking for, you know. Johan Faree, the man who was on an absolute charge down in Cape Town. It seemed like as soon as you picked up India Oil sponsorship, you're absolutely cooking around the tracks. Down here at PE, first on the grid. Yeah, no, the India Oil again was flying. Eh? Um, we came a bit of a high after Cape Town. We had a little bit of homework to do in the power department, but since India Oil signed the contract till the end of the year, it's looking good. And then we found the power, got a new block, so it looks like it's working. I just needed a bit of a new block, but otherwise the car is performing well. It's still very close, but at least we're in the top end of the grid now, instead of being third, fourth or fifth on the grid. So I'm very happy, and then tomorrow it's just going to be very hard racing, I think. You can see how close the grid is for yourself, but our main thing is just to get off the line and just try to defend and then go for the win in the first heat and then collect the points because um, poles, you get a lot of points for pole and then you'll get a lot of points for fastest lap as well. So my aim is just to try to do two qualifying laps in the first heat and then hopefully get the points. And then any bonus points we can get or any extra points we can get in the second heat will be bonus. So awesome. Audi's Johan Ferri share the front row of the grid with BMW's Anthony Taylor and the times of the quickest seven cars were covered by one second. Class A ready to rock and roll. Heat number one as they head down towards turn number one. Watch out for those Audis. Johan Ferri with a phenomenal start. Look at that up the inside. The awesome stuff from Sean Watson-Smith. He's going to get the whole shot down towards turn one as Michael Stephen nearly takes out Leroy Polta. Plenty of Argy Bargy as the first of BMW slots himself into second place. Watch out for the Sassel Nissans. They're coming on strong. And the My Car Audi of Melbourne Priest looking good as we go on board with uh, that's Leroy Polter. He's the first of the Sassel Nissans. He's got a BMW just on his inside. That will be Van der Linde as he gets shoved wide. A little tap there from Van der Linde. Now they head up towards West Bank. Oh, looking in the rearview mirror. Look how hard he's working in that car already. Through West Bank corner now. Here comes the Audi freight train with a little BMW thrown in for good measure. And it's Anthony Taylor in the Afrox BMW who is giving these Audis a good run for their money. His teammate wants in there as well. Just can't get past Michael Steven as they come out of the hairpin and down towards Bridgestone. Look how tight things are. That was race leader into turn number one. That was Johan Furry. He's now pushed and muscled his way through into second place. He looks like he's on a charge. And it's Audi 1-2 BMW. And here comes Michael Steven. Steven up the inside of Melville Priest. Lenovo, Michael Audi, unfortunately, taking some major strain as they go 
throw into the final corner. That is good, Joe. And they're gonna complete lap number one with Audis one and two. BMW in th third place, and the Nissans are nowhere. Well, you can see why we call that Class A. These are the top of the pile, the best drivers out here in the country. Michael Stevens getting himself ahead of Malvo Priest. So it looks like Malvo is starting to slide backwards. They've seen this so many times this year so far. Coming through Continental S's yet again. Taylor starts to open up a little bit of a gap now between himself and Mike Stevens and looks to close down on Johan Fari. Look at the power of that India Oil's Audi. He's definitely done some work. A brand new block in that car. And as they come out of West Bank Corner, down towards the breaking point for the hairpin, it's a, it, wow, it's an amazing battle up front here. And we're only on lap two. Fari closes up really tight. You can see he's got the power down and he's got the braking dialed as well. Here we go, four laps out of ten. And he has still not found a way past Sean Watson-Smith. Sean Watson-Smith, remember, this is his home track. He wants to show good in front of the crowd. But I'll tell you what, Fari is on for a championship. He really wants to show what it's all about. Yeah, he wants to take that number four off and make that just the A1 car as opposed to the A14 car. Coming out of West Bank. Oh, a little bit of pressure there. And look at that. Afrox BMW getting squirrely as they came out of West Bank. Onto the brakes and into the hip. And it's Audi side by side. Can Fari do the same thing as what he did to Anthony Taylor? He gets pushed wide. They are side by side. We're on board with Sean Watson-Smith. Team engine extreme car. Can he hang on? It doesn't look like he can. There comes the Indy Oils car. Fari hits the front. You heard a small bit of contact, but that was a great out outside inside setup from Faree. Now he's just going to have to try and hold off Sean Watson-Smith. You know how much he wants to take that win, but Faree has been the fastest man down here all weekend, and he has now found the place that he found from pole position. Yeah, as he goes across the line, here we go. It's a battle royal between the Audis. The Nissans, unfortunately, still back there battling. And there comes the tubular tech cars of Marco de Cunha and Darren Lobb. Unfortunately, just out of the pace at the moment. And they start to come in amongst the back markers now. Is this going to play into the hands of Mike Steven to get past Anthony Taylor? That's the third place battle we're watching. Taylor, the first of the rear-wheel drive cars. You can see it gets pushed wide. That was a move from Steven. But we're really running out of time here as the laps tick away. Yeah, last corner as they come into the last corner. Unfortunately, Michael Steven hasn't done enough to keep Anthony Taylor and Taylor is going to take third place. Faree first, Watson-Smith in second. Johan Faree beat Sean Watson-Smith to the finish line by one and a half seconds. Anthony Taylor was a further three seconds adrift in third place, with his BMW the only other car to disrupt Audi's dominance at their home circuit, which tight and twisty nature suits their all-wheel drive layout down to the tarmac. As an ecstatic for re-celebrated with his technicians in the paddock, we spoke to Lenovo Micah Audi privateer Melville Priest, whose fifth place in the race was the first highlight of what has so far been a disastrous 2008 season. Well, Mel Priest, uh, welcome return to racing and, and actually finishing the races and uh, running nice and high. Yeah, it's our tough first race that we managed more than four laps this year so far. So it's nice, we needed, you know, the team was a bit down, we had struggled with gearboxes so far. The team was down, the sponsors were down, I was down, I was doubting whether I could still race, you know. Having not been in a racing car, in a race situation, you're always a bit nervous knowing what, what's going to come, you know. Can you still hold your own? But it was a good race for us. I thought, I'm just going to finish this race. I didn't work too hard. It was pretty easy, safe. My tyres just held on to the guys and then just made sure I finished, needed it. He too, inverted grid and a rolling start. And look at this, it's Darren Lobb on pole position. He's got Chop Sapuka round his outside. We're back on board with Leroy Poulter. This is the Sassel 350Z as they go into turn one. Now heading towards the Continental S's. Will Poulter try and stick it up? The inside of Sapuka, not this time, into Continental S's. And it is Nissan's one, two, and three. And so the roles are reversed. That's right, all about the Nissan's. It's going to be up to the Audis to try and get their way through. But watch out for that end oil's car. First up, we've got uh, Sean Watson-Smith and Michael Stevens. Those are the two black Audis looking menacing. And then we go back to, I think it was three just behind them, and Anthony Taylor. Now, in fact, it was the Lenovo car there of Melville Priest. But here we are on board with Chop Sapuka going through Bridgestone Sweep. Absolutely flat out. You can see just just comes off the pedal and climbs on it immediately to try and catch the lobster. Look at Darren Lobb flying in this tubular tech. Sam Racing Nissan. Now, Darren Lobb's one of the guys who's been at the back, not necessarily off the pace, but just stuck at the back of the lightning pace that has been happening this year. First time we've seen him leading, and that's Polter on the loud pedal completely as he's stuck in third place. Thank goodness that was rear-wheel drive because he just kept it on the loud pedal. Here we go, lap three of 12 into the hairpin, and it's still Darren Lobb from Chop Sapuka. It's the battle between the Audis that we've been really, really looking forward to, and right now it's all about Watson Smith. He leads the Audis, although he's only in fourth place. Then it's Michael Steven. The Indy Oil's car there is Johan Fari, and just behind them, it's the Lenovo My Car Audi of Melville Priest. Well, Fari, remember, he was trying to take a double down here, so he's got a lot of traffic to make his way through, and you can understand why they've done the reverse grid. Things are so closely packed here, you could actually overtake three cars in one move. 
As they go down the straightaway yet again, here comes the move from the Audis. They're starting to put immense pressure onto the back end of Leroy Poulter. It really is, oh, problems here, actually Taylor out. Oh, looks like it might be the right front wheel there, unfortunately for Taylor. So the Afrox BMW pulls into pit lane and hopefully that team can get the car sorted out. That's right, some problems for Taylor and that's what happens in uh, the very close racing in hit number two. Close contact action and unfortunately he's got rubbed the wrong way. Still Darren Lobb in the lead, fantastic drive from that man. Yeah, well he isn't the Shelby Can-Am champion for nothing, that's why Lee for Phillips has put him in the team. He really knows how to pedal a car around you. Yeah, you can see some action on the Afrox BMW, putting some brand new Bridgestone rubber onto that car. So problems with the front, front right, as we said. And hopefully that car will get out and just circulate to get some more points. Well, it's going to be Taylor a lap, or at least lap two down. And uh, he's just going to go out and circulate, see what he can do for a bit of training. Darren Lobb, so impressive, holding off uh, Chop Sapuka. And those two are actually getting away from Leroy Poulter. And here is contact, Sean Watson-Smith and Michael Stevens. That looks like Marie trying to go around the outside, touching tires. That was the spuff of smoke you saw. Furry on the inside going through the sweep and he's going to take, uh, looks like he's going to get, yes he is. Michael Steven had no answer there. Furry, oh another little touch there between the two of them. So Furry means business. Here comes Chop Sapuka around the outside, taking the wide apex, going to cut it soon. Oh yes, problems. Big knock there from uh, Etienne van der Linde and he's tapped Furry. Furry spins out and unfortunately Furry has lost out big time here. Well that was five cars nose to tail literally touching as they went into that corner. So he's bound to end in tears and a bit of late braking. Look at the carnage. There goes Michael Stevens into the pits with a badly damaged Audi. <laughs> and look at Marvel Priest doing a bit of farming on the outside of the final turn. Looks like Faree's got some terminal damage there. He's going to try one more lap to see what happens. Oh, Michael Stevens' car on fire here. Fortunately, the marshals and his team are there to put it out. And you can see that there's some serious damage on that Audi. Steven is not going to be happy about this. That little tap from Etienne van der Linde unfortunately caused him to go into the back end of his teammate. And that's also caused a bit of damage to Johan Faree, who was basically in an endo. Well, that's the deal. He actually got his back end picked up completely. You can see he's been absolutely concertinaed touched from the front and the back and he will not be happy. Well, looks like it's the end of the day there for Faree. Yeah, unfortunately, that's going to cost him some points. But back out on the racetrack, this is what we want to see. You can see Faree is all okay. What has happened between Lobb and Chop Sapuka? Sapuka started to put big, big pressure onto Darren Lobb now. Darren Lobb just soaking it up, using his championship experience. But up the inside goes Marvel Priest on the second Afrox car. That's Etienne van der Linde. You can see the damage and unfortunately, it's going to be an expensive trip home for most of these guys down at PE. The Sasson Nissan's looking over so strong at Poulter in a ding-dong battle with uh, Sean Watson-Smith. Remember, he's trying to claw his way through. He'll be the highest finisher so far, and he's in him with a chance of taking the overall on the day. Side by side between those two cars as they went through Goodyear. Now they climb onto the loud pedal down the straightaway. What's going to happen? Is he going to get the drag? Yes, he is. He's tucked into the slipstream. A little bit further back, still the my car, just ahead of the Afrox BMW, and the second tubular tech car, the market Acuna. Unfortunately, right at the back still, but pushing hard to try and get ahead of that Afrox BMW. Uh, Poulter's the man who's trying to claw his way back into the championship lead he's off the pace at the moment he's got no answer to the front running so Darren Lobb definitely got that car hooked up Chop Sapuka also looking for his first win of the season and I'll tell you what Leroy Poulter has got some big problems Sean Watson Smith desperately wants to take that win but Darren Lobb in the tubular tech Sam racing car looking very very impressive right the pressure is starting to mount now we have to take into account that they're going to start coming in amongst the back markers real soon and is that going to play into the hands of Sean Watson Smith and possibly Chop Sapuka to get them through oh touch at the top that is Mark and Acuna trying something on Etienne van der Linde. The two of them come together through the hairpin and unfortunately take out some of the engine and Goodyear branding there. But it's all about action yet again in Brinstone production cars. Big, big damage on the front left side of Acuna's car and that's going to cause him some uh, stability problems for sure. Still, we go back to the Polta and Sean Watson-Smith battle and we're going to see if he can power that Audi all the way around the outside. Looks like the tyres might be going off on that second of the Nissans. Well, he's got it on the inside of the final turn and he's managed to take it absolutely Perfect stuff there from Sean Watson-Smith. Came out on the inside, drove around the outside and took the inside for turn seven. Now they go down the straightaway. There's going to be back markers in the way here. Hopefully they're not going to get in the way of these main four cars that are in the lead and in a chance for podium positions. Onto the brake markers and look at Darren Lobb just taking the defensive position on the right-hand side of the circuit. Priest looking still very, very strong down there in fourth place. So this will be his best overall finish if he can keep it on the black stuff until the end of the race. But Darren Lobb, you start to see him covering his lines. Chops and Puka pushing him really hard the whole way and unfortunately there is no way the Marvel piece is going to be able to cover this gap. Sapuka tries around the outside, you can see him coming in there as a massive cloud of dust follows Poulter as he puts wheels off onto the dirt. Oh, looking to get that position back, he does not want to relinquish
relinquish that position too easily. Here come the back markers. It's Kursi Swanapool. And I think Dave Compton, this is Darren Lobb's chance. Can he put one between himself and Chop Sapuka? That's what he's going to look to do. He breaks to the left hand side, comes across on the right hand side. Looks like Sapuka's got a better drive though. And he might be able to get up the inside. Yes, he has. Sapuka's got a superb drive out of the final turn. And look at that. Watson Smith's going with him. It's now a three way dice. It's going to be three by three over the line. Who is going to end up in the whole shot position through turn one? You can see how close that was. Darren Lobb actually lost his left hand side mirror you can see it missing from that side and Shapuka found a gap where no one else would have he was right right under the wing and he really made those back markers work that's a very very clever driver out there in the lead now great driving there from Shapuka as well as from Watson Smith he saw what was happening dived up the inside just tucked in behind that Sassel Nissen and got the engine extreme car right on his tail now he's looking to get past him can he make it another win here for today and hopefully take the overall win for Audis he wants to get up there he wants a win in front of his home crowd here he goes into the hip and not able to make it stick but he's gone around the outside Polter nearly takes out Darren Lobb Watson Smith super aggressive and Polter just not close enough to that action when they came up on the back markers to make it count Watson Smith definitely looks like he's got the horsepower advantage the Audis have been hooking up the whole way and there he goes up the inside it's going to be a drag race to go around the outside if you pray in that back mark is going to stay out the way and he leans on the outside of Sapuka it's going to go down to the next set of corners but that Audi is looking menacing and I'll tell you what Sean Watson Smith looks like a man possessed here today Darren Lobb still hanging on to third as he go across the line now, Chop Sapuka's going to pray that Sean Park keeps to his left-hand side because unfortunately, look in the rearview mirror, you can just see that engine extreme car coming up his right-hand side and unfortunately he has no answer. Watson Smith hits the front and gives him a little tap and says, come my boy, let's go, let's put on a show here for our local supporters. You can see the back end of the car hanging out, a lot of wheel work going on with Sapuka. He's not wanting to give this up, he's climbing all over the curbs. In fact, I can see his eyes, he's looking real mean and menacing and he doesn't want to let that Audi go, but unfortunately, he's a little bit down on power up the inside of one of the class b back markers there and he has a little touch all between polter and priest that's going to end up in tears but hopefully not as they come across the line now it is absolutely awesome stuff the checkered flag is out watson smith takes the win ahead of sapuka and darren lobb finishes in third Apart from being a personal triumph, Watson Smith's victory put him in the championship lead. And it was a happy Audi driver who spoke to us afterwards. Sean sure, Watson Smith, race number two, and uh, again, strong, barging your way through to the front. You made it work. Yeah, I think it's the first time I won in front of my home car in a long time. And uh, yeah, it means an enormous amount to me, especially after the first race. I really wasn't very happy with myself. You know, I know that Jan has, has had superior pace the whole weekend and, and his car was a lot better in Hairpin, but he still shouldn't have been able to pull a move like that on me and uh, that was really burning. Uh, and, uh, but what a way to come back from that. I, 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 I couldn't be happier. Unbelievable. With 14 of this year's 20 races still to be contested, the fight for top honours in Class A and the overall Bridgestone production car title is still wide open.